Hey guys, hi, how are you? Welcome to another underperforming video on YouTube. My name is Juan Carlos and behind me is a 2021 Tesla Model Y Performance. It's a vehicle that we had for the last month and we have already put over a thousand miles on it. So I thought it was a good time to take a break and give you an update of what it's been like to own this vehicle for that long. In this video, I'm not gonna make a, I'm not gonna do a full review per se. I'll leave that to the experts, but I do wanna go over some of the things that I really like and dislike about this vehicle a month into our ownership. Are you ready? Let's go. Before making our decision to buy our Model Y, we went through a series of expert reviews just to see what the car was like, but I particularly found a lot of value in watching actual owner reviews because these are the people that actually paid for the car and live with it 24 seven. So as such, I'm putting this review together. So in case you wanna buy a car like this, you know what you're walking into beforehand. This is an electric vehicle, so there is gonna be a process of adaptation from a conventional fuel vehicle to something like this, an electric vehicle. There's a few particular things that you may find a little bit difficult to adjust. Other than that, this is a great car that I really enjoy. I'm getting past the new car smell and I still find things to love about this car. Number one, the driving experience. This car drives pretty firm. If you have driven products from BMW with the M4 package, then you're gonna feel right at home with this car. The visibility is great. You feel that you're sitting high. Remember that this car is based off uh, the Model 3. So they were able to achieve this higher sitting position by just um, adding just one inch on the suspension. So this vehicle is about six inches tall, a little bit over six inches versus five and change of the Model 3. But what makes the sitting position way higher is the fact that they added these humps at the bottom of these seats, just about three inches, just to make the ride look taller. But you're basically driving a vehicle that is only about an inch taller than what is based on the Model 3. When it comes to the visibility on the back, it's really bad. There's a huge column that goes across the back that makes that uh, window the rear window opening really narrow from this angle so I'm still trying to gauge this vehicle and I already curved both of the wheels because the visibility in the back is I rated pretty low the interior and the dashboard of this car is has grown in me the first time I saw it a few years ago maybe like what two and a half years ago when the model 3 came out I didn't like it at first but it has really grown in me and especially with this white interior I really like this interior does it look premium some of the materials do, but overall it just looks like a, like a spaceship. It looks like very modern. I really like it actually. The large 15 inch screen is super snappy and responsive. I'm still learning my way through it, but I keep finding functions as I drive it. It is very distracting though, I should warn you. I wish I was able to customize the screen to make some of these icons a little bigger because when I'm driving, sometimes with my sausage fingers and a little bit of a bumpy road, sometimes I missed the actual control that I wanna push. But on the other hand, the stock sound system sounds great. In my opinion, it's better than the Mark Levinson in our prior RX350 and as nice as the Harman Kardon in the BMW products. And this is stock, remember. The mobile phone integration of the Model Y is great. Using our phones as a car key is very convenient. We really love this feature. I must tell you that it's very glitchy and sometimes I have to turn the Bluetooth off and on in order to reset the link. Other than that, the Tesla app works great. My best experience so far with the car apps. This phone key feature, it bounces you off many, many times. Yesterday was a particularly bad day, so I had to do it like five times. Sometimes I can go a couple of days without having to reset it, but when it works, it works great. I just wish it was a little bit more consistent. Now I wanna talk about the interior materials and the build quality of it. This, uh, the doors have this rubber material, it's pretty sturdy, but at the same time, a little bit soft. And then you have this soft vinyl right here and also on the oval rest as well as in the handle so you have this contrast stitching which looks pretty nice and i like it and then the the window switches feel pretty high quality i like them and then you open the door with this button it's a power button that you push then you open the door i really like this feature it's one of my favorite features and then when you move on to the to the center console we bought this car in march so as far as I know, March was the month of the update of this nicer material or nicer finish for the center console. Because this car has very little controls, um, there's a lot of landscape 
in this center console a lot of free space so it has room for these two wireless chargers we really like it i mean we, we use it a lot because i can put my phone here my wife can put it here vice versa and then you have this this slide door to open this huge compartment now you have these two cup holders that are kind of small i find them kind of small and they're not adjustable like i've seen in other vehicles and then you have this center console that is soft material and then you have this contrast stitching it's like a lighter gray over like a like a matte black and i really like this this center console by the way and as part of the performance package you get aluminum pedals or aluminum alloy pedal, pedals that i think they're pretty cool some of the uh, lesser quality materials you can find them at the bottom of the door and i, I want to talk about them because I just want to be really honest about my ownership experience this bottom of the door you can see here the edges are pretty rough like you can even see like plastic sticking out i'm not in love with this and when you look when you go to the materials of the rest of the vehicle i'm not in love with this material it looks a little bit cheap but <laughs> i really like this feature on the sun visors it's just the little details instead of having like a clip to hold it together you have a magnetic um, material that makes just makes it just stick as well as in this uh, vanity mirrors you can just open it with the it doesn't have a clip it just has that magnetic material and then you have speakers lots of speakers throughout this car so i, I think that's also pretty cool now let's talk about one of my favorite features in this car, which is the steering wheel. It's a very sporty because it's a smaller diameter. It's, it's pretty fat and it also has a quasi flat bottom, not quite a flat bottom, but almost there. And then all you have is these two controls and these two stocks right here that are mounted on the center column. This one controls the turn signals and the, and the wipers. And this one controls the gear selectors. It's the, you only have reverse, neutral and drive and then you do the little push for putting it in parking. Moving on to the back seat, because you don't have a center hump right here, you have a lot of space down here. And also this driver's seat right now is set up for my height and I'm about 5'11". I still have an inch of leg room right here. And also because of those humps where the seats are mounted, you have this extra space in the bottom of the seat where you can tuck in your feet pretty comfortable, comfortably comfortably <laughs> and also the materials up back here are just a replica of what you find in the front where you have this soft rubber and then you have this nicer soft vinyl remember there's no leather at all in any of the model y's it's all man-made materials and then you have some of the contrast stitching and as you get to the bottom you find that cheap plastic that you find in the front doors as well at the bottom of the front doors and the back of these seats is also pretty rough can you hear the material it's, it's pretty pretty cheap when it comes to the back you only get two vents for the rear passengers you don't have any controls per se and you only have USB-C outlets what I haven't been able to find in this car and please let me know in the comments if you have found them already I haven't found any 12 volt outlets I think if it doesn't have any that means that is this really an SUV because how can I think of an SUV that doesn't have the utility of a 12 volt outlet now, in contrast, something that I really like about this car is the floor mats. These floor mats, all of them, are made with this. Can you hear that? It's made with some like Velcro-like material that sticks to the carpet so they don't move at all. I really like that idea. Now, let me show you something that I really dislike about this car and it really bothers me. First of all, the way they implemented these seat mounts. They just raised the, the floorboard and then just added the extra inches for sitting position and they left this seam right here of carpet that just doesn't make any sense i think tesla could have done a lot better in covering this with some plastic material just to hide it or tuck it and then if you look at the back there's also another seam for the carpet right here so i don't know why tesla didn't choose to just consolidate both of them and it's just too visible i think this is this is cheap manufacturing. To fold down the rear seats, you have these two release buttons. So you just pull them and they go down. To set them back up, you have to do it by hand. The Tesla Model Y doesn't come with the privacy cover here, but what you do have is you have storage underneath this floor panel. And then you have a little more here, which is pretty shallow, but is there. 
but this can only be accessed when the rear seats are down. To give you an idea how roomy this rear area is, I lower the seats and I can fit full body back here. So I plan on actually spending time here, maybe camping. My wife is not so fond of the idea, but I want to do it. Let's move on. Oh wait, <laughs> look what I found. I found a 12 volt outlet right here. So scratch what I said earlier about the lack of. And then you also have the front trunk that you can open like this or with the phone. And the space is pretty good. And I really like this one. I, I, I didn't think I was gonna find myself using it as much as I do, but I really like it because it's very convenient. It's isolated from the cabin and for Monday things like, for example, picking up carry out food, you can just put it here and you won't stink the cabin. Let's move on to the exterior of the car. Teslas in general, they're not my favorite when it comes to body styles. They're, once you've seen one, you've seen them all. So I guess that's a good thing. For example, when you see a porch, you know it's a porch because of the line. Well, Tesla has the same thing going on. Older vehicles look sort of the same. The front end is very controversial. A lot of people don't like it. I actually don't mind it too much, but you will find a lot of empty landscape right here because these cars don't need a traditional grill for cooling the, the engine because there's no engine. So all the, the air or the air cooling that this car needs comes from this bottom grill. And one thing that I like about Teslas in general is that they don't have a lot of packages. So in this case, the lights are standards. They're full LED lights all around. So that's one thing that I like about Tesla. You don't have to upgrade to the better packages to get the better stuff. This is one of my favorite features in this car. This emblematic piece is the houses, one of the cameras and also houses the turn signal these turn signals on the side of the fender they're very common in the european cars they've had them for a long time but they're not as common on american cars and this tesla has it and i really like it these door handles um please if any of you own this vehicle let me know in the comments if you feel confident that these are not going to break with time uh, the way you operate them is you push with the thumb and then pull the lever but i always find myself doing this push like this and then I pull both because I'm, I'm afraid that this flimsy part eventually with time is gonna break they're flush against the body supposedly for aerodynamics but not my favorite feature all model wise regardless of trim level come with this black cladding this is some rubber plastic material and from what I've heard Tesla's are not known to have the best paint quality so this helps with future potential rock chipping so i like it it makes the car look more sporty and it also gives the idea that the car is a little bit taller than it is this car is not tall at all it's only about six and a half inches tall so i don't see the usability of it off-road this is not a tall vehicle at all look at this this is the only ground clearance you get not much one of the main reasons why we opted for the performance package in this vehicle is actually these wheels. They're 21 inches, they're called Uber turbines, and they're wrapped all around in Pirellis, and the front are 255 by 35, and the back are 275 by 35. And the color, the black color, with the contrasting red brake pads, just makes for a very sexy look. We really like it. One thing to keep in mind in case you wanna order the performance model is that these tires offer very little protection to the wheel in case you curve them i already curved them twice and i always find myself parking too far from the sidewalk when i do parallel parking because i don't want to hit them again if you add the fact that this car has very bad blind spots on the back and it doesn't offer a 360 camera then it makes for a recipe for disaster i already curved both of the wheels minor chips but they're already curved and i only had it for a month another thing that i really like about this car is the actual roof just the fact that it's all glass and even though it has two columns on the inside, from the outside, it gives the effect that it's just one piece of glass from the windshield to the sunroof to the rear window. I really like that, especially in this white color. I find these mirrors to be a little bit small, especially when I'm backing up. I feel that they should be a little bit bigger. Let me know in the comments, any of you that own this vehicle, if you find these mirrors to be a little bit smaller than desired. This car is a pearl white on the exterior, but when you open the doors, you will notice that in some of the door jams and some other areas, you don't have that pearl effect, that metallic effect, you don't have it. I noticed that on the front trunk and also on the rear gate, that when you open it, all the areas inside the vehicle are not of the same pearl metallic white. 
the only indicator that this is the performance package is because of this uh, spoiler in the back and also this red line where it says dual motors is the only indicator that tells you that you got the faster Tesla Model Y. Underneath here you have this more cladding and then here you can remove this so you can install the tow hitch in case you ordered one. Driving the Tesla Model Y Performance. When I bought this car, I had to come to an agreement with the wife because she's actually the main driver of this car on what we should get next after 2018 RX350, Lexus RX350. And it's always been on my bucket list to own a Porsche. Not a new one because I cannot afford it. I'm not rich, but something pre-owned, maybe a 2014-15 that I could within the same price bracket of this one, which is about $60,000. But my wife just refused to drive a Porsche. So she liked the SUV drive from her prior Lexus. That was her first uh, SUV ever. She liked it and we wanted to get another SUV. And we considered this Tesla Model Y. And I, I wanted, I still had that itch for performance from that Porsche uh, itch that I had. And I found in this car the perfect blend of a, of a car that is very practical to drive every day. And then when you wanna have some fun, you can put it in sport and drive it fast. This car is incredibly fast. This, I mean, obviously, needless to say, this is the fastest car ever driven. And I've driven, I've driven other sporty cars uh, from Audi, from uh, BMW, from Lexus, but nothing comes close to this. Um, especially when you come from other than an electric car, you will find the nature of the the driving dynamics of an electric car very unique. Especially in this car with the performance package, it's just super fast. Every time I get somebody new in the car, I always put it in sport and I step on that go pedal and I always throw them off guard because they're not expecting this car to be as fast. <laughs> you really feel the G-force as you press the gas pedal because this is just instant force. To me, a car is not all about going fast on a straight line. I also like the car to perform well on curvy roads, and this car does that very well because despite the fact that you feel that you're sitting up high, the center of gravity in this vehicle is super low, obviously because of the electric battery, a huge electric battery that the whole floorboard is an electric battery. And some of the things that I really like about this car that add to the lower center of gravity is, for example, the frameless windows. Those are usually associated with sportier vehicles and then you find it in this SUV. When I make these videos, I'm gonna try to bring you uh, value. I'm gonna try to bring you stuff that you can take with you in every single one of these videos. It's just not me trying to put videos out. I actually wanna talk about the things that may make your decision about buying a Tesla Model Y performance in this, uh, in this case, or just a Tesla Model Y in general. And something that I want to talk about in a future video is the range because I've, I have found that the range in this vehicle is not what's claimed. Um, I'll be very, very generous with it and I'll say that it's about 12% less than it's claimed. But if you drive it a little bit faster, then it, it, it's nothing. It's like nothing close to the 303 miles that is it's posted. Another huge letdown of this car is the fact that it doesn't have a 360 view of the exterior. I mean, it has so many cameras, right? Why wouldn't it be able to compose a 360 view? Before I forget, in the description box, I'm gonna leave you a referral code. That way you can get a thousand free miles worth of superchargers. If you use my link, it also helps me because I also get a thousand miles. So I, when I bought this car, I got it from a friend and he benefited and I benefited as well. So if you, by any chance, wanna buy a Tesla, use it and you're gonna help yourself with the first few 1,000 miles and help me as well in the process. As I said earlier, one of my favorite features about this car is the driving experience. In this case, the use of the autopilot is just really good. I just set it up on longer trips and it just follows the lane. I've been in many modern cars and nothing comes close to this. I don't wanna know how much better the autonomous driving package is. It's $10,000, I don't think it's worth it because this does the job for me. It follows the lanes. It, uh, it actually has like a auto steer feature when the cars on the sides are getting too close to me, it just pulls away. And also when I'm in bumper to bumper, it just sticks with the vehicle ahead of me. And if, uh, if we come to a full stop, this vehicle stops and then it resumes when the vehicle in front of me starts uh, pulling away. I've used this system on curvy roads, uh, obviously with caution, 
and it just does it for me. I, I've driven over 100 miles at a time without having to move the, the uh, steering wheel. Um, it will ask you, occasionally it will ask you to tap or move the steering wheel a little bit so that it knows that you're still in control. But one thing that I do, so in case you wanna take a shortcut on it, is all you have to do is move the control of the uh, volume or the cruise control on this side and you don't have to move the actual steering wheel. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. And with that, I wanna wrap it up. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking to the end. The best way to support my channel is by asking a question, making a comment related to the content and by subscribing to my channel. My name is Juan Carlos. I'll see you next time. Something that I left out of this video that I consider important is the fact that I have zero initial quality issues with this car. So, so far so good for the first month and way over a thousand miles. I think I had something like 1300 miles and it hasn't even been a month. And I, an elephant in the room that I would like to address is this, uh, this sunroof. It's, um, it's pretty toasty in here. Right now it's San Diego weather, 83 degrees, and I can feel the sun bathing me through this sunroof. So in the upcoming weeks, I'm gonna tint it. Um, I think it's not gonna be cheap because it's, it's just one piece from here from the front all the way to the back and also the range. In the upcoming weeks, I'm gonna be uploading a video exclusively about the range, my experience with the so claimed 303 miles of range, which I don't think it even comes close. I've made about three longer trips of about 220, 30 miles, and I'm cutting it, cutting it very close with the proclaimed range of 303 miles.